the Democrats are considering adding seats to the Supreme Court. Interesting. Uh, so now Common Dreams reports that Democrats in the House and Senate on Thursday introduced legislation to expand the numbers of seats on the U.S. Supreme Court from 9 to 13, effectively adding four additional seats. Holy shit. Interesting. Uh, so now this is an effort that is being led by Jerry Nadler, Hank Johnson, Mondaire Jones, and in the House, uh, and Senator Ed Markey uh, in the upper chamber. The Judiciary Act of 2021 was unveiled just days after President Biden signed an executive order forming a 36-member commission tasked with the studying of the potential Supreme Court reforms, including expansion. Yeah. So that's fascinating. Uh, not the commission. Uh, the commission's bullshit. Uh, kind of ridiculous. Oh, let's do a commission. Why would we do a commission when we already know what the problem is? Dirty tricks from Republicans. Um, no, let's, uh, it's a good idea. Let's do it already. And besides, there's constitutional backing for this. Okay. Uh, in fact, Demand Justice Executive Director Brian Fallon said this in a statement. We cannot afford to wait six months for an academic study to tell us what we already know. The Supreme Court is broken and is in need to reform. This bill marks a new era where Democrats finally stopped conceding the Supreme Court to Republicans. Our task now is to build a grassroots movement that puts pressure on every Democrat in Congress to support this legislation because it's the only way to restore balance to the court, protect our democracy. Uh, now, not only that, but Sean Eldridge, president of the advocacy group Stand Up America, noted this on Twitter, that this move, because right now conservatives are railing against this, saying, oh my God, unprecedented grab, power grab. No, no, this is something that has been done numerous times throughout history. Uh, in fact, we've done it about seven times. Uh, and five times added seats to the court. Uh, now, why would you need to periodically add seats to the court? Well, turns out we get more districts. Um, in fact, as Eldridge wrote, the past five times Congress expanded Supreme Court, it set the number of justices to match the number of circuits in the federal court system. Uh, today, there are 13 circuit courts and the Judiciary Act of, of follows precedent by increasing the Supreme Court to 13 justices. But of course, as I mentioned, uh, Republicans are already complaining. They're bitching about it. Uh, but here's the thing. If you didn't play dirty uh, in order to get your conservative majority, then, well, the Democrats wouldn't have to do this. Remember, Merrick Garland was robbed of a seat. That's a stolen seat because of Mitch McConnell. Mitch McConnell blocked his nomination for over a year for the bullshit reason of, oh, well, it's an election year. And not only that, but they also confirmed Judge Amy Coney Barrett just days before the election when they were in power, of course. Uh, so, hey, you want to play dirty? Okay, we can play dirty. Let's expand the court. Let's add four more seats. Why the fuck not? Why should we not do it? Um, use the majority to put in progressive justices. Uh, now, here's the rub. I don't think Biden's going to do that. Biden... If this somehow passed, which there is a lot of Democrats who are against this bill as well. Um, so it is by no means favored by the majority. Um, but even if somehow this were to pass, Joe Biden, faced with four different new nominations, would not be picking progressive judges. I think that he would do bipartisanship. Uh, he's going to pick moderate justices uh, because he considers himself to be a moderate and, of course, even after doing all that, he's, he'll get no Republican support. Uh, but at the same time, to be fair, his picks wouldn't be Amy Coney Barrett either. Just saying. Um, because Amy Coney Barrett and Judge Neil Gorsuch are basically right-wing ideologues, pro-corporate ideologues, uh, that are deeply unqualified. So, unfortunately, uh, I don't see this happening, nonetheless. Uh, Mondaire Jones is correct uh, when he pointed this out on Twitter. Our democracy is under assault, and the Supreme Court has dealt the sharpest blows. Um, and he pointed to the ruling on Citizens United, Shelby County versus Solar, and Rucho versus Common Cause. To restore power to the people, wrote Jones, we must expand the court. Well, look, true. I mean, I would love it if there were a progressive Supreme Court that could get rid of the biggest rot in American politics. And that's the money. Uh, get rid of Citizens United. Get rid of Bilotti versus First Bank. Get rid of Buckley Vallejo. Okay? Get rid of all of those 
very things that have allowed corporate money to take over our politics and watch our democracy change pretty much overnight. Okay, these three decisions are why there's a flood of corporate money in politics in elections to begin with and why most of our politicians uh, do not represent us at all, but end up serving the donors. If you got rid of the power of money in politics, they would actually have to serve regular people. Um, you get rid of those, you help fix democracy. Uh, but of course, unfortunately, you would need either a constitutional amendment or for the court to go and overturn these. And of course, you'd have to have challenges to those laws winding their way up through the lower courts and ending up in the Supreme Court, to which you would have to have a majority of that. That would be an incredibly long, difficult path, um, which is why, of course, I would go with the amendment. But nonetheless, that is something that you could possibly do with the court. Um, and so I mean, what's great about the Constitution uh, is that it allows you to do these things. It allows her for a pathway. And it's not an easy pathway, but there's a pathway. At some point, the people who wrote it knew there was going to be a situation where Congress is corrupt. We're at that situation. We have Congress that's corrupt. Uh, and we have the tools, thankfully for us, to fix it without needing bloody revolution. Because we already have that. Turns out, we don't really want to repeat the whole thing. Uh, so we have tools in there to take back our democracy from corrupt corporations and politicians. Uh, now, of course, it's not easy to use these tools, so you can't really abuse them. Um, so it's not easy to, obviously, get these things to the court. And it's also not easy to amend the Constitution, but they are things that you can do. Unfortunately, there are gigantic roadblocks still. Uh, and, of course, right now, the filibuster. Uh, that's really the biggest thing. The filibuster requires anything uh, to get done, uh, uh, requires... Uh, 60 votes to get anything done, okay? You got to blow up the filibuster. Um, now, if you're going to blow up the filibuster, you're going to need Joe Manchin, um, as well as the rest of the Democrats, uh, by the way, in both the House and the Senate. Uh, and so is this going to happen? Mm. Needing uh, to either blow up the filibuster, which Joe Manchin won't do, or get Republican support, which will not happen, then you're looking at something that's doomed to fail. Uh, and again, even if you it did somehow get through the House and the Senate, you have Biden that's not in favor of this. Um, now, maybe, I, I think, and, and I know, uh, like, people give me shit for this. Um, Biden has, he's not rigid. He's not an ideologue. Um, Joe Biden wants to be like, I think that's the situation. Joe Biden wants to be liked by people. He wants to be liked by the donors, of course. Uh, that's one of the big problems with Joe Biden. And Joe Biden wants to be liked by Republicans. That's also a big problem. He wants everybody to like him. Now, the problem with that is that if you want everybody to like you and you try to please everyone, you can't, you're not going to please anyone. <laughs> okay? Um, you're not going to make anybody happy. Uh, and not only that, but Joe Biden is not a change guy. Uh, he said it before, nothing will fundamentally change. And he is he has lived up to that promise, okay? Uh, and that's that's really, really unfortunate. Uh, because as Stand Up America political director Brett Atkins writes, unless Congress works to depoliticize the judiciary and stock activist judges like Brett Kavanaugh and Amy Coney Barrett, from striking down policies supported by a majority of Americans, our voting rights, racial justice, and health care will continue to be at risk. For decades, Republicans have rammed radical white men justices under the Supreme Court in a coordinated effort to defend corporate special interests, attack Americans' constitutional rights, and erode our democratic institutions, said Atkins. Uh, the Judici Judiciary Act undoes the damage conservatives have done to the highest court by adding four seats to the bench, matching a number of federal appellate courts. Time is of the essence. And we must act before the right-wing justices on the Supreme Court rid the rules of our democracy even further. Atkins added, that starts with both chambers quickly passing the Judiciary Act. So let me add, let me add um, that we need also uh, to pay attention to the lower courts. And, and that's, that's kind of on us uh, as, you know, people who are on the left. 
there's been too much focus on just the Supreme Court and not enough focus on the lower courts as well. Uh, Donald Trump, when he was in office, not only got three Supreme Court justices, but got hundreds of lower court justices put on the bench in these lower courts that are going to be there. They're lifetime positions. And they're going to be making very important decisions. Okay. Um, Not only that, but you had Democrats that also supported and voted for and confirmed right-wing Supreme Court justices. Neil Gorsuch, for example, was supported by Joe Donnelly of Indiana, Heidi Heitkamp, North Dakota, which is no longer there. And of course, Joe Manchin. Of course it's Joe Manchin. So at the end of the day, I am, of course, concerned that Joe, uh, Joe Manchin and the Democrats uh, are going to come in like a wrecking ball to this idea and prevent any sort of progress being made on this issue and that we're going to continue being stuck with a right-wing Supreme Court for a generation. Uh, and so, look, I, I, I'm sorry to, to be bleak, uh, in my opinion. I love this idea. Uh, I love the idea of expanding the court, packing the court with progressives. Um, but in this case, I, I just I don't see it happening. Uh, and I wouldn't get too optimistic about it because of all that's going against this. But I do want to bring it up because there are people who are fighting, uh, who are at least trying to bring this up and trying to push these better ideas uh, on how to take the court back. Uh, from right-wing ideologues. And uh, so credit where credit is due. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a like and share with your friends. You can subscribe and help out the channel by becoming a patron. It's patreon.com slash Jeff Waldorf. Or you can become a channel member as well by hitting the join button below.